Hi everyone and welcome to Age Drama Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I, I can't even get over today, so let's get right to it. At the quarter mains, uh, Paul comes in while Tracy and Dylan are having their Susan disagreement. And he thanks Tracy for being so kind to him, and she says she realizes that this is about Susan. So Paul kind of takes Tracy's Susan theory and runs with it to an extent. And he tries uh, to get back to talk to Bodica, and I'm like, loser. Because I felt like Cassie today, and she always calls me a loser because we're best friends. And Monica has like legit security detail like I thought Tracy was just being funny like that she was Monica's security but no there's like legit security so Tracy mentions that Monica recognized the cologne um, of the killer and she smelled it in this house at some point and suddenly uh, Paul's not pushing to talk to Monica anymore hmm wonder why why that is so after Paul leaves Tracy tells Dylan it's time to call Susan and Dylan's still not on board with the Susan plan but he'll go along with it because Tracy's his mother and he knows better than to say no to her so the number for Suki's they say Suki's I think it's like spelled like you would spell like Suki Stackhouse but I can't be sure so uh, that's it, uh, Susan's store um, it goes right to voicemail so then Tracy answers Dylan's phone because he left and he forgot his phone and uh, it's not Susan, but it is the shop owner. And apparently Susan sold the shop a while ago. And uh, she asked for a forwarding address. She writes it down, and she knows that place. So she knows something has happened to Susan. But what has happened to Susan? Where is Susan? I know. And I'm going to tell you in, like, maybe five minutes. So at Kelly's, Morgan's having issues focusing. He hasn't even started his paper, and Kiki comes over. So he says the professor had a personal issue, so they got an extension, and... She thinks his paper sounds cool and asks to read it because, uh, like, he makes it seem like he's farther into it. But I feel like he didn't have to do that because if he got the extension, he could have just been honest and said, I didn't get a chance because, I, I, like, I'm, I'm not, like, it's not coming to me. And then she could have helped him with that. Like, there was no reason to lie, even though he was lying about the extension. So, whatever. Uh, so, uh, Morgan is, like, really stern about not having her read his paper because, you know, it doesn't exist. But, like, he's super defensive. And, like, for someone who thinks the paper exists, like, it, it's kind of, like, really mean. Because uh, she was just trying to help when she said she'd read over it. It's not like, oh, let me read over it because I don't believe in you. It's let me read over it because that's what people do. Like, the other day, Cassie's like, hey, can you look over and make sure, like, all this makes sense? And I looked over it. And there were a few things. Mark, mark, mark. Perfect. So, like, that's just what people do. So, he, maybe he's just been, no, I've been out of school a while, and I know it's what people do. So, I'm not making excuses for him. But I know he's having a tough time because Davis switched out his meds. So, like, I'm not totally holding it against him. So, she apologizes for him thinking she's hovering. And then he's like, don't apologize for caring. And I was like, what was the point of all this? Uh, so, Morgan tells her he's on his last paragraph. And again, you don't have to lie that much. You have an extension. You can be halfway. You're like, hey, I didn't really start because it's tough. Like, <laughs> uh, so she leaves for errands and like he looks at the buy a paper websites and I'm like thanks Darby for putting that in his head really appreciate it and he was like it's just this once it's just this once and you know what that's what I said at the beginning of the month when I went to Chipotle and guess what I'm on my sixth time this month so it's not just once so do you like how I, I worked that in yeah, well, I needed to go at least four times to get, like, the Chiptopia things, but the first one, they bumped me up to medium, so I don't know how that's going to work. Anyway, I apologize. I just, it's a little insight into my life. Uh, so, uh, Morgan finished his paper by the time Kiki gets back, and she got him tickets to the Hypothermia show, which is apparently a band. And, you know, it's been sold out, and I was like, been there because the Green Day show was so close, and I was in line. Sorry, I can't relive that part. So Morgan says he doesn't deserve her, and I was like, whoa. Oh. And then Dylan comes crashing in. Well, not literally like that, but I'm sure that's how Morgan saw it. Uh, so apparently there's a website that they have to submit their papers to. Like, they don't send it right to the teacher. Send it to this website because the website does a scan 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 and make sure that you didn't uh you know buy your paper you know or anything like that uh what i believe is called the darkham asylum although i might just call it arkham asylum because batman uh so franco and liz talk on the phone she thinks he's meeting with his accountant but not so much he's meeting with heather and well the two things aren't mutually exclusive <laughs> so heather's not happy 
that her income stream is gone. And he says he had to tell because of the GH killer. So he told, he explains all of it, you know, let's go down the stairs, rare blood type, had to tell, this, that, and the other thing. And then he asks for a little bit more money so he can take care of Elizabeth. And Heather's like, well, if you care so much about Elizabeth, why did you push her down the stairs? And he's like, what? Like, she thinks he's the GH killer and pushed Elizabeth down the stairs. So she thinks that removing the tumor didn't do anything and he's still a killer. And he's like, yeah, no. And she's like, I, I know this is an artistic piece. And she, he's like, yeah, no. And uh, she tells him to be careful. And he's like, I didn't kill those people. Like, well, how, how many different ways do I have to tell you I didn't kill those people? So she wants him to let his darkness out. And he's like, look, I, yes, I was brought in, but I was exonerated. Elizabeth is the one that cleared me. And he's completely innocent. And then she finally gets it through her head. And then she hints that she did something, but she won't say. So she won't give him any money because she wants him to make it on his own. And I'm like, it's it's not like he's 20. And like, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I, I mean, I don't even know what I was going with this. So at Elizabeth's place, uh, Elizabeth is splitting in between like a wheelchair and a cane. And Hayden comes to visit. Yay. Uh, so Hayden thinks uh, she that Elizabeth would be happier if she was in jail and explains the whole... Um, now my mother's in jail because blah blah blah. So Elizabeth says she didn't know any of it. Like she thought Hayden was the one that pushed her and you know she tried to fix it but it was too late and Elizabeth says she didn't mean to make trouble. Well that's not totally true. You did mean to make trouble but you just thought you were making trouble for a different reason. So Elizabeth asks if they can move forward and she talks about Sarah but she lives in California and it would be nice to find a way to be sisters because you're right here. And Hayden's like, yeah, no. And then she gives Elizabeth a piece of paper. It's a bill for the lawyers for her and her mother. And she expects, like, Elizabeth to take care of it because Elizabeth is the reason her mother's in jail and the reason she was in jail. But, like, not really. The reason you were in jail is because you took those diamonds. Like, it's not Elizabeth's fault that, well, Elizabeth didn't, like, make you take those diamonds. Like, you got yourself into that situation. Elizabeth's not the bad guy for bringing it to the law's attention, which is something that happens way too much just, like, in normal life. So, um, then she uses, like, the blood as leverage. So, Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, look, I'll have much more after household expensive and expenses, and the stuff I do have goes to my kids. Like, you're barking up the wrong tree. And Hayden's like, well, then let's call Dad. And Elizabeth's like, no, I'm not going to contact him before I talk to him privately about this whole thing because I don't want to blow he and my mother's marriage apart. So Hayden thinks that he has money because he's a doctor. Elizabeth's like, yeah, he does humanitarian work in underprivileged countries. There's no big money there. Like, again, barking up the wrong tree. So Elizabeth tells her she should get a job and Hayden says no one will hire her again because of her connections to Raymond Berlin. And then Hayden makes a comment about Elizabeth's private nurse. And Elizabeth is like, yeah, Frank is taking care of that for me. Maybe bark up that tree. <laughs> and Elizabeth says that, look, I'll return a favor if you ever need blood. But uh, Hayden can go find another rich man to leech off of. And that seems to really, like, bother Hayden. Like, hit her right here. Like, that bothers her. At Alexis's place, so Julian is in the house for reals. He's not just in Alexis's head, and he wants to talk. And she says she won't think twice about killing him now. I'm like, you go, Alexis. So Julian says that the night he held the knife to her throat haunts him. Fifty bucks it haunts her more. And he says he'll keep his distance, but he wants to give her something. And she's like, I don't want anything for you from you. And he's like, it's the divorce. And he gives her the papers. And she's like, put him down right there, and I'll get him later. And Julian asks what happened at his trial. Why did she blow her testimony? He thinks perhaps it was deliberate to save him. He approaches her, and she like goes to swing the bottle at him. So that he. He shoves him with the bottle, fortunately slash unfortunately, depending on which side of the fence you're on. So, uh, Julian, uh, she says she hates him. They're done. She didn't throw that trial. And he thinks she believes she hates him, but she doesn't. Men, let me tell you, they will do anything to make a woman, like, like to not acknowledge their like a woman's feelings. Like, it's not just this. Like, I've seen it so much. In my, it happens to me all the time where it's like, well, I know you think that. No, yeah, I think that. Like, I'm not, oh, oh, hitting that nerve, hitting that nerve. So he needs to trust that someday she'll remember how much they meant to each other because it's the only way he can keep going. And you know, the only way I can keep going is with Ika. Hello. <laughs> You're so mean. 
You're so mean. Did you see that? Say hi one more time. Say hi. <laughs> You're so mean, Ecat. So mean. Um, so it's the only way he can keep going. And I'll have to find a way without you, Ecat. So Alexis calls the commissioner and asks for paperwork for a restraining order and to make sure Julian Jerome isn't allowed anywhere near her. Now at a mystery location that seems to be a hospital. Could it, what, where would Tracy know this from though? Like, could it be, I don't know, like a hospital, I don't know. Let's, so it seems to be a hospital for people who are suffering from, um, I can't think of the word, but like just mental breakdowns or something like that. So Paul is there, he knows the nurse by name, so he goes there a lot. And she says that, you know, she's had a good day so far. Who's the she? We all know who the she is. So there's a blonde in the room, a hospital room, a really nice one too, like with a couch and everything. And it's Susan, and she doesn't seem well at all. She's like holding a pillow, looking out the window, which has like the drapes over it. So like she's looking through the curtain to see the scenery, and you just don't want to do that. So she won't talk. He has a cake for her. He does. He says that he didn't succeed in getting all of the presents, but he got most of them. So she doesn't like uh, when he gets near her. Like he, she like bolted across the room to the bed. So she apparently she's like trapped inside herself. And when he says what he got her for her birthday and that it'll help her find her way back, and there's a list of people who hurt her that he made. Kyle Sloan for one of them, and then apparently Dr. Mays mishandled the rape kit. Uh, then Ellis. Prescott and Jenkins I don't know what they did but they were also involved maybe they were some kind of witness that didn't come forward or something like that and he says he got rid of them so she can come back because the world is safe so like cool motive still murder to quote Brooklyn Nine-Nine uh, and now we're at the end scene already I know right so Julian oh I said I would announce character of the week oh I just realized oh I'll do that first thing tomorrow I promise I'll make I'll put the reminder I promise I won't I promise uh, so not end scene uh, Julian says he'll stay away from her but they'll always be connected goodbye for now okay bye uh, Franco uh, comes to Liz's place uh, she says Hayden showed up I wanted money Elizabeth uh, kind, like she kind of wanted really wanted a sisterly connection like this is I don't know Elizabeth for all her faults she does have, like, a good heart, you know? Uh, so they have uh, Franco in, like, a legit suit, and he looks really nice, and he's, like, a totally different person. And uh, Franco tries to extend the limit on his credit card when uh, Elizabeth is upstairs. Uh, Hayden looks for open positions in finance and investment. See, that's your issue. Yeah, they're not going to hire you in finance and investment, which isn't fair. Isn't fair because that's what she's... You know, she, she does, but she needs to look at something in another field. Probably something that's not going to pay that well. But, like, she's, she's, I, I, I think she's just not being realistic if she thinks they're going to hire Raymond Berlin's daughter in finance and investment. Uh, so Paul tells Susan he killed them all except Monica Quartermain. And he's, like, crying. This is, like, a way different side of him we've never seen. And, like, this is really devastating for him. Uh, but unfortunately for him, Tracy heard it all outside Susan's door. So, they're not killing Tracy, so wonder how that's going to work out. Um, Alright, thank you so much for watching today's General Hospital recap. I know they're a little bit later. I'm getting a little bit again. And I'm not forgetting to put them on public like apparently I did. Uh, but I will stop rambling and I will see you tomorrow. I promise, first thing, character of the week. And we'll vote on something really good this week to make up for it, which I think we got a, a lot of good things going, um, but I will see you then, and I hope you have a great night. Bye!